Welcome to Pario Magazine, where I chat with individuals who have a desire to create. Today, I'm joined by one of the creative minds behind Australia's newest wrestling promotion, the Renegades of Wrestling. Welcome to Pario Magazine, Mikey J. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Excited for the upcoming final, finally getting the debut show underway? Well, yeah, like it's it's sort of a whole lot of emotions. Like I'm excited for it. I'm nervous. It's getting back into it after a few years away, especially from promoting uh, such larger scale events. So yeah, it's it's just getting back into the swing of things and yeah, making sure that everything's uh, happening as it should be. Yep. So we're here today to chat about your journey in the world of wrestling and obviously the formation of Renegades. Before we dive into that, though, do you want to quickly introduce yourself to our audience about and who Mikey J is outside of the crazy world of wrestling? Um, look, I'm 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 sort of pretty quiet, fairly reserved. Like to keep to myself, enjoy my music. Um, living away in the uh, outskirts of Melbourne, and yeah, it's it's uh, just a peaceful little life. And then you just decided to cram in crazy wrestling stuff yeah don't know what came over with that one yep when did you sort of first discover this passion for wrestling um i started watching during the peak of the attitude era so uh, i look at it as being a soap opera or a weird phase that i just never really grew out of uh, so it was something that kind of had me interested from a pretty early age and yeah as as time went on um discovered independent wrestling in Australia and thought it was something I might like to be involved with, uh, not necessarily as a wrestler, um, but, you know, I'd always sort of been good at holding a camera and all that sort of thing. So that was my intro into Australian wrestling. Okay. So then how did you sort of then go from obviously doing camera work to becoming a promoter and in that big backstage role? Yeah, I was filming for a whole heap of promotions right across the country for about four or five years. Um, and especially in Melbourne, it felt like there wasn't really much that was, you know, properly showcasing uh, all the all the talents that we had here. So after sort of sitting there and kind of going along with it for a while, I thought, well, why not try and do my own thing instead rather, rather than whinge and complain about it? Um, and I'll put my money where my mouth is instead. Uh, that began to me working alongside uh, Tommy Hellfire. Um, we were going to be booking ACW, then the promoter died um, just two weeks out from the first event, so we, we kept going with that and then eventually rebranded to MCW and, yeah, just kept building it up from there. Was it a much more difficult role than you had envisioned to begin with? There's a lot of ups and downs with it, so I don't know if it was any more difficult than I thought it would be. Uh, certainly as things got bigger and we were doing more and more shows and working with, with a whole heap of people from all over Australia and the world, there was a lot more pressure. So I think as that sort of grew, you know, those, those responsibilities then sort of really take over the, the rest of your life as well. Um, and yeah, eventually it was sort of one of those things where it was time to move away from it and and get a bit of a break and COVID helped with that as well. But yeah, I, I think I was just ready to kind of um, give it a rest or step into something else. And I also felt that um, we'd kind of hit a ceiling with what MCW could be. Yep. Did you ever sort of suffer a sense of imposter syndrome when you were booking those international talents, I imagine? The New Japan show with Kazuchika Okada would have been, if there was ever a moment for that, that would have been that moment? Well, it's it's funny. Originally, when we were having those discussions about being able to book someone from New Japan, we were expecting that it was going to be someone like a Kushida or Hiromu Takahashi. And then the message came back where it's like, how about Okada? Uh, and we sort of went, Are you sure we don't want to start with something smaller? And the response was, it's Okada or nothing. And then we sort of went, okay, guess we're booking Okada then. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if there was ever really an imposter syndrome with it. Um, and, and that's kind of because it was something that we were building and all striving towards. So once we started getting that recognition, that's, 
the culmination of all the work that we've been putting into it. So to then go, oh, should we be here and all that sort of thing, I, I think would kind of defeat the purpose of that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I didn't really feel a sense of imposter syndrome or anything like that, just because of all the work and effort that everyone had put into it. So it kind of more felt like um, the fruits of our labor. Yep. Yeah, like you'd, you'd finally earned earned that spot. Exactly. If we hadn't put in the work, work and it had all fallen in our laps, then maybe, but that certainly wasn't the case. Yep. And obviously you stepped away from MCW, but have since formed Renegades. Was it just that that passion was still there and you felt like you had more to give to the Australian wrestling scene? Yeah, I, I sort of was looking at everything in a post-COVID world and felt that the market was still there for a promotion that was like MCW. Um, but I think a, a lot of people have different visions for what a promotion could be or should be and Australian wrestling in general. I'd like to think that, you know, alongside Chris Fresh, we came up with uh, almost the blueprint for what a modern world-class Australian independent promotion should be. Um, and we sort of felt that it was time to dip our toes in again and um, give it a second go around. It, it, it did feel like there was a little bit of unfinished business and uh, speaking with Destroy All Lines as well, which was a contact that I'd had for a few years and we'd sort of kept in touch. Um, we sort of went, maybe this is the right time to try it. What were those sort of first discussions with Chris like in terms of what the key vision for Renegades was going to be? It was kind of looking at what other people were doing and going, ah, this doesn't feel right. Or, you know, things like that going, hmm, would we do things differently? Yeah, we would. Um, so it was almost similar to the creation of MCW the first time around in that looking, looking at what other people were doing and going, this doesn't feel right. We, there should be more, all, all that sort of stuff. And um, then going, well, let's see what happens. Let's, let, let's see what we can do here. Um, and let, and let's put a plan into action. And it's something that we started discussing, you know, about, about a year ago. And there was a good five or six months where we were just squirreling away, just hitting ideas back and forth and, and having conversations with people and, um, eventually going, Hey, we've, we've got something here. And you mentioned that partnership with destroy all lines. Does that suggest that renegades will potentially be a more national showcase where we won't just have shows in Melbourne. There might be shows in Sydney or Brisbane. That's absolutely the plan. Um, so we started with what we know and that's Melbourne. Um, but even with the roster, you can see that given a lot of the names that we've announced, half the roster is from outside of Melbourne for the first show. Um, and that's, and that's because we, we, we do want it to be a more national promotion. Um, we want to have the best from all across the country and, and we've got the means in order to do that and provide that sort of product. Um, and yeah, eventually we do want to branch out. Uh, it's just a matter of learning to crawl before we start walking. So we want to, we want to establish ourselves first. And the best way to do that is in, in the town where we live. Yep. Is there any sort of concern that obviously if you come into Sydney, you'll be stepping on PWA's toes or if you go to Adelaide, be stepping on toes over there i've had conversations with most of the promotions around around the country and explained that that's not our intention um that's not something that we we feel that we're doing we're offering an alternative product um i i think that we also aren't running often enough to be seen as proper competition for those monthly promotions um but it's not like we're hitting up everyone's venues and and all of that sort of thing and we're also not using uh for example top line talent from those promotions so you're not going to get the same main event scene uh at renegades that you wouldn't say pwa or mcw there's a there's a mix of people and and that's by design too because we don't want this to be another mcw or another pwa or wrestle rampage or riot city or epw etc etc yeah, and I guess it gives those those talents that are on those shows, but maybe at the second tier, it gives them a, a different platform to showcase their talents. Is that sort of the vision? 
Uh, well, yeah, like, I don't think that they're necessarily second tier talent. Um, you know, like, that, that's something that I would say is probably undermining some of the talent pool. Like, it, it's it's just that, you know, there's, there's plenty of promotions that can uh, use the same five or six people from all over the country. And we look at it and go, well, there is so much more of a... Uh, depth of talent in in, the, in this country than just those same people that everyone's saying, hey, we hope they go overseas to a, a, the UK or America and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, we're, we're really also looking at the next crop of talent coming through. And, you know, with the work that I've done um, for other promotions around Melbourne and keeping an eye on Australian wrestling and all the rest of it, um, I'd like to think that we've got a pretty good idea on who we should be giving those opportunities to that may not be getting those elsewhere and, and perhaps just not yet. You know, I'm sure once certain people start getting a proper run at Renegades, then maybe you'll see them popping up more elsewhere as well. Okay. Yep. And uh, on... In terms of the creative process behind the scenes, what does that sort of entail in the lead up to a show like this debut show in April? Um, it's it's a lot of back and forth. It's it's a lot of discussing ideas and plans and who's available and where are we going with certain aspects. So, uh, you know, we want to try and make sure we're not coming up with ideas and matches and angles from show to show, but also that we have a longer term plan uh, for the promotion and for our core group of uh, talent. And we want to make sure that that's something where we're going to be uh, paying off some of those long form stories that, that we want to tell um, and, you know, character development arcs and all the rest of it. So yeah, there, there's no real set process. It, it all sort of comes together over a period of time. And I imagine once show day does arrive, it's not a sit back, relax, the job's done. I imagine there's a lot of work behind the scenes to keep the show running smoothly. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of work that goes into it both in the lead up to and on show day. So look, if, if I'm super stressed on show day, then that means that everything in the run-up hasn't gone to plan. You know, that, that means that there's a degree of a lack of preparedness, but you are always still going to be stressed on show day as well, just because then it's all the last minute things that can pop up. But it's, it's usually just a matter of making sure we've got everything lined up. And one of the things that, uh, you know, we, we had fairly down pat in the past was making sure that we were identifying problems early and making sure that it was all sorted out so that then when you get to show day, you're free to worry about those last minute things that come up, as opposed to everything else that you should have probably had organized already. There will always be things that fall through the cracks, but um, yeah, yeah, we're trying to make sure that we alleviate as much of those um, show day stresses. Yep. And now that the debut show is fast approaching after everything we've been through with COVID, how are you feeling? Um, nervous, really nervous. Like there's, there's still plenty of work that needs to be done and there's plenty of work that needs to be done for uh, the, the following events as well and, and continuing to make this as, as big and as good as we possibly can. So um, I think especially in the early going, you're never going to feel 100% with the first show, um, especially an undertaking of what we've been trying to accomplish here. So yeah, like there's definitely a lot of, a lot of nerves, um, but you know, there's, there's still a few weeks left and, and it's something that we'll be working hard at right up until show day. And then even after that, with pushing show two and getting show one edited um, and online and all the rest of it as well. So it's, it's getting back on the hamster wheel and, and, and starting to really go for the run and make it all happen. And this upcoming show has a stacked roster bringing people back to Australia like Jonah, also got Robbie Eagles, The Velocities, Caveman Ugg, Harley, Lena Cross. Should fans sort of expect stacked cards like this for future Renegade shows? We certainly intend for that to be the case. Um, there, are, there are a few people that we've been talking to that we want to bring out or bring home or, or whatever, and that's, and that's something that we'll hopefully see unfold over the coming months. Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly the, the intent that we're going to have a stacked roster, um, and, and quite a diverse roster as well. Is there a dream talent that you would like to book or is Jonah probably that person because of his connection to yourself? Look, 
there, there is definitely a personal co connection between you know Chris and myself and and Jonah. Um, yeah, like he's he's always been a special talent, and and we sort of feel that once we started booking him in the main event at MCW in the past and really fleshing out how much of an unstoppable monster he was, that that unlocked something really special for uh, both talent and promotion. So yeah, like there, there's definitely a whole lot of other people that I, I do want to bring out and a few key talents that we, we want to work with again. Um, but that's something that we'll, we'll see pan out over the next few months or year or whatever. Okay. And then ultimately, what is the dream accomplishment with Renegades? Uh, to kind of be the premier independent promotion in the country, um, especially if we're going to be seen as more of a national promotion. Um, the way that we present this, the way that that we build the storylines and the characters and everything else, we want it to be seen on par with the top independent promotions from around the world. And because we've done it before, then we hope that that will be something that we can repeat. Okay, perfect. Where is the best place for people to support Renegades of Wrestling and keep up with future announcements? We're across uh, all the social medias, ROA Wrestling AU, there's renegadesofwrestling.com and yeah, we'll, we'll keep everyone up to date on there uh, as, as everything progresses. Perfect. And then finally, where's the best place for people to support you and follow your creative journey moving forward? Uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Mikey double underscore J-A-Y. Perfect. Alrighty, thank you so much and we will see you at the debut show at the end of April. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having me and thanks for your support.